I believe that's a advanced technical method for taking a bolt loose, right? The double wrench and smack it with the palm of your hand. Heck, I'd imagine if you got the owner's manual for this car out, it probably has a picture of that maneuver. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to replace the driveline in my daughter's 2006 Kia Sorento. And for my regular viewers, I got a quick story for you. I got a new tool to show you, and hopefully you'll stick around and, like always, give me any tips of things I miss or could have done better. For the rest of you, I decided to make this video because search-based, as I searched this problem, I didn't find very many good videos on doing this repair. So hopefully it's helpful and we'll get to the repair pretty quick. So about four or five days ago, my daughter sent me a text message that was a video clip of her driving, holding her phone, and the window was down, and all I heard was road noise. The clip was literally three seconds long. And then there was a second text that said, what is that noise? And I texted her back. I said, I don't know. Are you driving now? Are you stopped? Where are you at? Just to find out, like, do I need to come over there? What's going on? Five minutes later, she walks in the house, you know, says her car's making this noise. And I said, well, next time pull over and call me and tell me what's going on so we can make a decision together. She's 16 years old and, you know, wasn't sure what to do. And this is a case where she should not have kept driving. When you see what we were dealing with, this could have led to a a wreck at any moment. So my takeaway there was have that talk with your young kids that if something doesn't sound right like that, get pulled off in a safe place and have someone come take a look at it because you never know when your wheel might fly off the car. All right, so that's enough talking. Let's get under there and see what the problem is. Then I'll show you what I got in these boxes and then we'll get her fixed up. I took the car for a test drive just down the driveway and back. Said I don't even need to go over any further than that before I get under it and look around. So I lifted it up, all four wheels. I, I checked for any kind of play on the, the wheels to see if there was any kind of bad steering components, any noises. I wasn't finding anything. And I was checking for like loose exhaust, if an exhaust pipe had come loose and was rattling around, even though that's not what it sounded like. And then... I lifted the car up a little further so I could get up under here, and this is what I found. Yeah, that bearing is completely gone. And just seeing that, I thought it's a miracle that the car wasn't throwing her all over the place and beating her to death driving instead of just a noise. But that bearing's completely gone. I thought, okay, how hard would it be to get that drive shaft apart and replace that bearing? Then I thought, well, before I get that far, let's look and see if there's anything else wrong. And we slide forward. Right here's the bearing that's bad. And just right here, sixteen, eighteen inches from that bad bearing, the U joints completely separated and the two halves of that U joint were just pushing each other. And it's a miracle to me that that whole shaft didn't fly out with both ends of it being loose like that. But we got lucky, I think, that she was able to get home like that. And I think I'll crawl out from under here and I'm actually going to jack the car up and support it a little bit better and then we'll start taking this thing apart. I want more than just the two jack stands under it. Because if you noticed, my chest was touching the uh, underside of the... The car, the exhaust was on my chest, and then even this um, frame support here. So I, I want to make darn sure that it's supported well so I don't get crushed. Now what I've been using is this jack right here. I think I've had this jack at least 10 years, and this mechanism right here is real stiff. I lubed it up real good the other day when I was working on it, and it's doing a little better. But when I got the car jacked up, I couldn't break it loose to let it back down. And I had to put a pipe wrench on this handle. I've lost the top half of the handle. I don't know what happened to it. And I just decided I needed a new jack. The other thing is, it wouldn't lift high enough. 
I measured, I think this jack lifts about 17 inches. And when I lifted this 17 inches from their recommended jack point, I could only get the jack stands under the axle to come up two clicks. And whenever I set it down on the jack stands, the tires were still touching the ground. So I had to put wooden blocks on the jack, which is not the safest way to do it. So I was, I just, I told my wife, I'm going to go buy a new jack before I really work on the car. So I thought, I'll just go over to Harbor Freight and I'll get me a new floor jack. I'm due. And then I started thinking, I have a partner that I bet makes floor jacks. You guys know I'm sponsored by Vivor. And when they have a product that fits what I'm working on, I'll send them an email and ask them if I can review that product on my YouTube channel. And that's what we have here. So I did some comparisons on pricing and specifications for the floor jacks at Vivor and Harbor Freight. And what you find in terms of the, the specifications on the jacks are pretty similar. And I definitely think Vivor is price competitive. So one of my things about a sponsored product is I don't recommend it unless I would spend my own money on it. And I wouldn't hesitate, based on the listing, I wouldn't hesitate to buy this jack. Now, just got to see if we actually have any problems with it. This is a four-ton jack. Everything's well packaged, no damage in shipping. I think this jack got here within three days of placing the order. So as far as being low profile, it's maybe a quarter to a half an inch taller than my previous jack. But in terms of lift height, this one went to 17. I might mess up the numbers. I think the Harbor Freight was 18 and three quarters and this one was 19 something or, or maybe 20, I don't remember. But this one lifted a little bit higher. And again, I think this was cheaper than the equivalent at Harbor Freight. That's a really long handle. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's our lift height. Three, four, five. 6, 26. And now it's not moving, it's just rocking. Okay, so we're talking 26 pumps to get to 17 inches, or 11 pumps to get to, I don't know, 20 inches. Big improvement, it's also got bigger wheels on it. Got a lot more control it's also new but seems like a big upgrade over the jack i had anyway this video is not about jacks so let's get this thing lifted up looks like i'm missing one video clip where i tried turning these with a 3 8 drive ratchet and couldn't get it to turn so I sprayed some rust patrol on it and let that soak for a little bit to see if that helped loosen them up. Then I got a half inch drive ratchet. But as you can see here, I'm not able to get it on there square because the head of the ratchet is too fat and it's not the best solution. Right. I don't always need a fancier tool. Sometimes you need a simpler tool. Wish I had a way to turn that down here, but I think I'd have to take it loose at the front first. I'd rather take it loose here first. Okay, so I guess if I put the car in neutral, I could roll this down and make this easier. And with uh, all four corners supported, there's no negative to letting the engine turn right now. Am I, am I crazy? Should be able to put it in neutral without starting it. Yeah, you can. All right. Go ahead and take these two bolts all the way out. All right, we're in neutral. There we go. I will put it back in park.
this one might be under pressure if it's trying to drop. Now, I don't think it probably is trying to drop. It's probably going to have to push in, push the drive shaft towards the transmission to get it to drop. But could be wrong. That's why I'm not under it. The nut on the back is just held in place by the nut being up against the, the I don't know if that's a pinion or what that's called, where this attaches to the rear axle. Oh yeah, nice easy push in, drops down, we're disconnected. All right, so we took the four bolts out at the back, that let the drive shaft drop down, then we got two bolts up here, and that will let this, actually, that's it, that, that'll let the whole thing come apart. Let's hit it with the Rust Patrol in case these are stiff. Rust Patrol is a product that I've been testing out for at least six months, and I've been really pleased with the results. It's sort of a competitor for WD-40, but I think it works better and you don't have to use quite as much. So I'll put a link in the description for my discount code on that product. See if we can get this the half inch drive up there. Oh yeah, we got a little more room now. Sure, we're, we're loosening. And now they're coming out easy. She's a beaut, Clark. I wish I was just rich. I could just pay someone to fix everything. You know, people say that like, oh, rich guy problems when I have something break. Like, I have some debt on expensive machines. That's not remotely the same as being wealthy. Okay, let's keep track of how this comes apart. This has a big rubber washer that goes on top and through the bolt. And then there's some, oh, there's another rubber washer that goes in between this, this brace here and our actual shaft. Want to make sure we get that back right. Okay, regular washer, metal washer. It goes metal washer, then this rubber gasket, which has a metal sleeve in it. Looks like, okay, underneath it also has a metal washer. Now, see. Woo doggy. Nice and easy. Moment of truth. Let's compare the old shaft and the new one. Flange is the same and the shaft on this end looks the same. I'm not seeing any difference between these two at all. For me, a critical point of concern is making sure that no dirt gets in this and that it doesn't get dinged or scratched up or anything. So I'm gonna try to keep this held up in the air. Okay, now obviously that's the long end. So I've gotta get that straight back and then lift this over. That's heavier than it looked. I saw another video telling me to have this flange down, but the, uh, the other one was up, so I'm gonna do it the way it was. I certainly didn't mean to shove it in that far. I got that pushed in too far. There we go. Yeah, that slid in and out a lot easier than I thought, and I shoved hard on it and pushed it too far. But now, we take our rubber spacer 
and our metal washer. Put those back up here and get our bolt. See if we can get one started. Okay, I've got one started. And for me, it was easier to get this lined up by lifting this shaft. What I did was lift it up, then extend it out so it would set on the rear end. And now I'm not holding the weight of it. I was keeping my hand on it so it didn't slide sideways and fall off. But by extending that out, I let the rear end hold the weight. Okay, that's it for this end. I put the transmission in neutral again so I can rotate the shaft to line up the bolt holes. An ideal tool would be to have a couple of alignment punches under here to jab through this. I probably have them, but I don't want to go find them. So I'm going to see if we can just get her done. Easy peasy. Go ahead and run these down finger tight. Okay, I've got them all four run down. Now I need to put the transmission back in park so I can tighten them without turning it. Before I do anything, let me know if I've messed up. I don't want to try driving it without you telling me. Man, I wish these were live streams. I'm pretty confident that this problem is fixed and we don't have any more issues with this exact thing. Now, I'm gonna take it for a test drive right now, but it's too dark to film that. So, if there's a problem right now, I'm gonna come in right here and tell you that. Otherwise, that means it's fixed if you don't see me again. And of course, if there's a long-term problem, I'll have a follow-up and I'll post that in the on the screen somewhere. So I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.